Hi, and welcome to Section 3, Keras, Deep Learning on the GPU. This is an exciting section for us in that this is a very, very new package in R as of the time of the creation of this video. While previously GPU machine learning was difficult to do in R, this is making it much more realistic to compete in deep neural network work in R. With that in mind, we'll be looking at an overview of the Keras package. Be looking at how to install the Keras package, how to build a normal feed forward neural network with Keras. We'll explore the CI FAR10 CIFAR10 data set. We'll build a convolutional neural network to classify the CIFAR10 data set. This video begins with an overview of the Keras package. In the video, we are going to walk through a discussion of TensorFlow, a Python package, Keras, another Python package, and the Keras implementation in R. TensorFlow is an open source project that originated with Google. It abstracts using tensors, multi-dimensional data structures for numbers, of which matrices are one example. It allows these tensors to be manipulated on the CPU and GPU. Lots of functions are implemented to assist with machine learning, but this is still a fairly low-level library. Keras is a wrapper for either TensorFlow or Theano. It raises the level of abstraction to allow for high-level machine learning functions. So often in Keras, you will see implementations of an entire layer of a neural network as one single function call. Keras is becoming the official front end for TensorFlow. We will see closer integration in the near future. The folks at our studio have written an interface to Keras in R that mimics the Keras functions that you see in the Python documentation. This implementation runs on top of a Python virtual environment. Virtual environments in Python are just a space that isolate packages. We're not talking about virtual machines here. We're just saying that a set of libraries, or if you're familiar with Ruby, a gem set, there really isn't an equivalent concept in R. But this isolated environment of Python that R can call into and take advantage of the functions. If you're not familiar with Python or virtual environments, never fear. This implementation hides those abstractions away. There's only a few commands in the setup, and we'll walk through those in our video that relate to Python. So why all this hassle? It sounds a little bit difficult. We have Python under the hood because machine learning is effective on GPUs. What is a GPU and why is it effective for machine learning? GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit. These cards are common in desktop machines, mostly known to consumers for gaming purposes. The 980 Ti shown here is an example of a fairly recent powerful gaming card. GPUs support a lot of linear algebra functions that are necessary in the gaming world to do transformations of three-dimensional objects and rendering. This is what allows fast first-person shooters in 3D and other games that consumers enjoy. Along the way, machine learning researchers discover that that hardware could be used for large parallel operations in machine learning. Matrix multiplication and other large dimensional data functions are well supported and very fast on a GPU. Deep learning is sped up a lot, and as you'll notice from our prior work with neural networks on the CPU, work can be much slower. You'll see nice speed up when we work on a GPU. 